more let's do that again my throat has been sore more any more any welcome to another much much love video thank you so much for clicking play please do like and subscribe to the channel it costs you absolutely nothing but it does wonders for me it helps me get these videos to as many people as possible sun kissed Esana. we almost sun kissed and sun kissed but today is sunday i am going to church so a couple of things that need to happen today me to one get ready and go to church god has put a lady's um name in my heart and i tried calling her but she's also a subscriber and a follower of mine and we've been talking and she gave me her number and i haven't checked in on how she's doing so i wanted to actually call her um but she didn't answer her phone so it is early sunday morning so maybe she's not going to church today so i definitely want to pray for her and then call her before going to church or at least text her uh before going to church and then i need to get ready i am wearing my yellow mr price dress which i have had since university days like this dress is so old it's so like focused yeah worn out like it has strings and it's lost structure but it's literally my comfort dress i love it to bits and then church then after church i need to come back i need to send some emails for the wig business i took some orders in and i have the tracking numbers so i need to send individual people their emails with their tracking numbers so they can track the orders and then i'm done uh and then i want to go to hillsong's frontline frontline is like their young adults uh section and i went there in january for a trip and it was mind-blowing so they're having a chat and a conversation about singleness uh marriage about work at our age and so forth and so forth um at 6 p.m in waterloo and i really want to go i'm really excited about it so i might actually go to kingdom city which is my church because our service in waterloo starts at five so i might start there and then like rush to hillsong because i really want to get that conversation specifically because it's with pastor rob ferguson and i'm really he's one of the lectures at hillsong college i really you know wanted to go to college and partially because of some of his teachings as well obviously by the holy spirit but like i trust his biblical knowledge and um he's a biblical scholar and i like that so yeah so i'm very excited to do that but after that i need to really rush because masejo i call him masejo but he's american so it's masego um the guy who does the song da -da. That one, that one, the Masego from the States jazz um, musician is in Sydney. So I'm excited. I'm going there with my friend, but she also has church in the evening and then we're rushing to get there. Mase those open at seven, but Masego only starts performing at nine. So that is my day today in a nutshell. Um, so let's iron, let's get ready for church and I'll be sharing bits and pieces, just little bits and pieces of what is being said at church today let's get into this video it is so hot for what i am doing <laughs> it's the drama for me <laughs> it's the drama <laughs> I'm vlogging today. Hey! Good, thank you. See you. Hey! Hello. That's hi. Hey! How are you? How are you? How's your chicken? It's good. Now you can see. Oh, God, see you. See you. <laughs> see you. Oh, 
Oh, it's still tough. This is not church. This side? Upstairs. Oh, God. <laughs> When your church is in a hotel, sometimes the room changes. I'm vlogging. <laughs> Welcome to church. Thank you. Hey, how are you? Lovely. Thank you. Which side are we going? How are you? Awesome! Woo! I could do that all day, man. Do this all day. Well, welcome to Kingdom City, guys. Yeah. If you're first time, 17th time, I just want to say welcome. My name is Sam, I'm part of the team here. Pleasure. I hope you guys have a good time. Um, so, besides saying welcome, I just wanted to let you guys know that there's a kids program yes. just further down there. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Kids program. <laughs> Guys, the church was so good. The church was so, so good. A um, couple of things, mainly just about sin. We sometimes look at sin as it is the action of doing something or the thought of doing something wrong um, in God's eyes. And yet sometimes sin can be not in alignment, you not being aligned to what God has purposed for you. So you being not in the purposes of God, knowing what God is telling you to do is sin. Basically disobedience is sin. Or this part got to me, being obedient and the wrong pace is still a sin. What? So doing what God has said you should do at the wrong time is disobedience. And therefore it is sin. I knew that, ne? but you know, and the Holy Spirit brings it heavily. Um, and a couple of other things, like, yeah, the pace one got, got me. Doing the right thing or being obedient to God at the wrong pace is still um, a sin. It's all about alignment to your purpose. Anyway, the girls are taking pictures. Nangumpum. Fiona. Uh, we're just gonna go home now and I'm gonna finish my story about thank you for my man who is not my man I told you to get a trolley you need to put in two dollars then it comes out DVD <laughs> Activity. <laughs> What's in it? Oh, okay, I put my leg in it. Nemanya Tala. What do you wink? I like her. Oh, fresh. Yo, Balele, 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 what I got. Yo, Balele. Oh. Guys, I don't know if I've never noticed, but the watermelon is three nine nine a kilo. And I've just paid like $10. I thought it would be like, maybe okay, $5. Hey, bo. Or six, or even eight, three, nine, nine. If it's two kilos, then it's like four times two, $8, but no. Okay, I thought I should show you that there are tails, tellers, but can you see one, two, three, only three are active. 
and then everybody has to go to self service you'll see there's more people there they take cash they can take cards as well um, but yeah if you have like mainly it's older people who are in this line or people with children and stuff um, but honestly this is probably the first time I've seen or like three cashiers at the tills normally it's like one and then everyone is just like queuing there to pay okay I found a bonnet now I look a little bit better a little human okay so let me tell you about the guy I met so I was on hinge I was bored um, and I've just been going through some stuff right now that I can't really disclose at the moment but it is related to my job actually I can probably share this so I lost my job and now I need to find another job in Australia or I'm moving to South Africa mind you I'm not stressed about this I'm not worried about this I've just been like okay Lord that chapter is done where are we going next and I think that's where my frustration comes with like not knowing what's next and that's actually trusting God and faith in God is you don't know what's next, but you keep, you still trust him to give you exactly what he says, which is abundantly above all I can imagine. So I'm in a good space. It's just the producer in me who is a planner, who is just like, at least if I have a job, I know how to, like, to plan or, you know, but God has been so faithful with the wig business, with everything else. So for the past two months, I have been unemployed news flash uh but the wig business came literally like i think a week if not two weeks before i um was made redundant um so uh i've been good financially uh with that even though with my struggles with apsa and whatnot literally every day god is like coming through giving me um deals tiktok deals and like weekly there's one tiktok deal to, the, to last for my needs this week and then there's another one to last me for the next week like things like that where god is just showing up in my life and i can't complain guys i can't i really cannot complain um but i've been praying as to where god wants me have i finished my season in sydney australia i did what i came to do now it's time to go back and i've always said this like if this is the end of it like if god is like pack up your bags you did what you came here for go back home greater is at home very happy to do that my family is in south africa my close friends are in south africa i do not mind um on top of the fact that the work that i was i'm doing here is not necessarily a step above from what i was doing in south africa i literally just changed locations but i'm doing exactly the same work uh so i could go to south africa and still do the same work like it's not career mind blowing changing for me uh i just now have international experience big ex exposure um which is good don't get me wrong which is good and is a blessing uh but it's really not like that's why i was like always asking god what's the plan what's the purpose of me being here and now that it's time for me to go possibly i'm okay with leaving like i'm okay with leaving uh what's been a little bit uh of a frustration is just not knowing it's just not knowing what is this greater plan god has for me uh that is in south africa or still in sydney it's just that not knowing uh but also there's so much peace that comes with giving it to god like it's not a burden on me like i've given it to god um uh, my friends fiona has been praying with me uh we've been obviously everyone who's close to me knows this but um so they've been helping me just pray about it and uh, I also wanted to take a different step in my career in terms of I am in advertising, which means I work for agencies and I produce content for brands. Okay, so the brands will come to the agency and say, okay, so we have this, we want you to promote this for us. Uh, TV, radio, whatever, you write the scripts, all the creative stuff. And then I would produce, put those together and actually make it happen. Right now, I wanna go into the marketing side, brand manager, so therefore, I am the person who holds the product and I go to the agency and ask them to do stuff. Right now I'm in the agency, now I want to be the marketer that goes into the agency. I think that's the only way I can explain it and I think I have explained it before. So 
um, making that shift while in Australia is seems difficult because what I've been applying for is my next. I'm not applying for where I've been. I'm applying for my next and what I'm trusting God for. But it seems very difficult to make that switch. But I'm not even getting interviews, bro, like at all. And I really don't want to go back to agency. There's so many agency posts here. I don't want to go back to agency. I really don't. And I feel like my faith needs to drive to what I'm praying for and what I'm applying for, what I'm putting effort into. So that's what's been happening. And I think maybe going to South Africa, then switching from South Africa into, you know, the client side and then coming back if that's within God's will. Because um, I know a lot of friends who have done that, switched from agency to uh, client side back home so maybe it's just gonna be easier to do it back home and then come back or do it back home and stay back home that's what's happening uh so that is the actual um big news i think that people have been asking even in the comments uh what do you mean you might not be coming back to sydney so when i leave for south africa i still might not be coming back it depends if god shows up and gives me a job in sydney the job that i'm praying for I will stay but if I get that job in South Africa I'm leaving uh, but either way I'm leaving Sydney so it's just a matter of am I coming back or not <laughs> am I coming back or not I actually um, uh, uh, ended my lease agreement on Friday and today's Sunday I ended my lease agreement I took pictures and I'm gonna start selling things on Facebook market already told my friends if they want anything they can let me know um but i'm also practicing wisdom i can't just say i'm putting my faith and i'm like applying to jobs i'm praying and i believe and i'm trusting god for an opportunity but wisdom is also practicing okay if you're leaving in two weeks two and a half weeks to south africa and that's it you need to start selling your stuff you need to cut your lease you need to you know all the things that i have to do practically um so i'm putting faith and actions um, in both scenarios until God opens the door. What the word says we must knock and God will open the door. So I'm knocking at both and whichever door God opens is where I will go. How did we get here when I was planning on telling you about my man? Okay, I have no idea. So if you can join up. But I was bored because I think I was explaining why I was bored. I was bored because I've been at home unemployed. <laughs> so I was bored. So I went on the dating app downloaded it and this time because i've been on the apps i know what to look out for people who say they're christian and they're like um orthodox or uh anglican or methodist and whatnot still are christian that's not a lie but that's not the christian guy i'm praying for i'm praying for someone who's gone to um charismatic church just like me I'm very intentional about that because there's certain concepts that I need my husband to already understand in terms of like things like the Holy Spirit, speaking in tongues, um, and all of those type of things, you know. Um, so I'm trusting God for a man who's from, could be from any background, but right now is at a charismatic church, okay. So that is the plan because we're very specific in our prayers for our husbands. Um, I'm open to it if he's not, but biblically sound. Um, and it's not a religion, but it's a lifestyle. Having a relationship with God. Yeah, uh, then still, So I was bored on the app. So, and then I'm going through and I'm very specific as to what I'm looking for. Literally what is on my bio is, I'm a Christian girl, loves the Lord, loves Jesus. I don't even say the Lord because people have Lords out here. Say so loves Jesus. Um, and uh christianity is not a religion it's a lifestyle for me so i want someone on the same page and this dating app has a part that says um let's make sure we're on the same page about and then you put whatever that is so me my faith so this guy love of my life put in faith and put a cross in there so i swiped uh and then we matched on thursday this is all happening really quick like we matched on thursday and he says hi i said hi we started talking for a little bit um i'm physically attracted to him because which was another thing where i was struggling with like the guys i'm physically attracted to aren't necessarily christian guys or they like you know just the look the outside appearance of what i'm attracted to i would not see in the church really to be honest with you 
um, see that in the streets it grew and all of these places but I wouldn't really see my types in the church physically um, so he was my type physically and we started talking and what I liked about him I still like about him is he wasn't asking above the surface level questions he's really intentional about getting to know me so he was asking instead of asking how many siblings you have he would ask how is your relationship with your siblings do you understand the difference between the line of questioning one is just informative one is actually like putting in effort is to i want to hear i want to listen and also trying to check my character at the same time so we spoke and then he was asking me things about how is your day at work and then i had like i couldn't lie i had to tell him i literally like said it all they said my visa is running out at the end of october so i'm going back to south africa blah 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 and then this man spoke the word of god to me <laughs> he spoke the word of god to me and i was just like you know god brought you here in the first place and if, if your time is up he will send you back home and he will provide for you um in your next step so don't worry about it and if god wants you to stay here he's still able to make miracles we can't limit him and stuff like that based on our i guess intellect and knowledge but you need to just have faith you could get a job here back here a week before you leave two weeks before you leave you can get a job while you're in south africa and you have to come back so don't limit god and you know trust him so i really liked that um, he didn't give me scripture, but he was speaking facts, biblical facts, uh, which I, I literally was just like, after a whole year of being here, over a year, like 17 months right now of being in Australia, and only now do I meet a man who loves the Lord, who loves the Lord, I mean, oh, so me being blown away, but I'm still not paying attention to like, most things so i start asking where he lives and he lives literally 15 minutes from where i live 15 minutes i'm like where do you go to church he tells me he go to church his church and my church is like two streets away his church is in a hotel my church is in a hotel there's so many things about him that me and him like just proximity which is great uh but it's not the only factor but just there was just like some coincidences where i'm just like this is a lot um and then we just continued talking and i was really excited to get to know him more and i left my phone then the kitchen went to the kitchen come back when i come back i have like three back-to-back -back messages from him on the app and then he's like hey Mathia, you are amazing you're a lovely person really lovely to meet you however i do not want to get into a long distance relationship right now what is clear is that you are going to south africa until you get a job so i don't want to waste your time nor do i want to waste my time i am looking for intentional dating towards marriage and he does not want to do long distance johnny johnny rib of my rib bone of my bone johnny adam johnny i was actually gutted like i was just like what bro you're not even gonna give me a chance and then i was like playing it cool and i was like okay i think i said interesting like, i was like okay interesting well here's my instagram handle because i don't give people my number until like i actually meet them uh anyone and then uh his response and then he's like hey i'm actually not on social media like the only app that he's on is on facebook he's not on twitter he's not on instagram he's not on tiktok which is also nice because he does not have information on me that is on my socials to like act how i say i want my person to act or like he doesn't know me he doesn't have knowledge of me but if he now he probably does but because he went and followed me on Facebook uh, and I do share my YouTube links on Facebook. So he hit me up on Facebook. Hey, it's me. I'm like, hey, cool. And then I was like, I respect that. Cool. I don't want to do long distance. I won't lie. I went to bed on Thursday being like, Lord, I will. Like this whole time I've been meeting guys who are just like, who don't have a relationship with you, who are just, anyway. So the next day, um, 
was Friday. Friday night, I'm sitting at home, like maybe around 6.30, and I was just craving ice cream and this Messina ice cream in close to church that I love. So I text him on Facebook. I shot my shot, shoot my shot, shot my shot, whatever. I did it. I went in and I said, hey, I'm craving some ice cream. Let me know if you want to grab something. Uh, and then he calls. I'm like, hello. I'm nervous. It went, like, I, I didn't mean really even talking about it because I don't get like that. Um, uh, so I answered and then we talked and then he's like, my Milan guys are so much. So he's like, he's from the gym. He's going to get home, make some food, have some steak maybe, and take a shower and whatnot and rest. I'm like, okay, cool. And then he's like, so I say, what did I, what did I say? I said something to alluding to the fact that like, you can make me dinner. I can come over and you can make me dinner. Imagine child of God, never met this man. And then his response, his response was, well, I'm a Christian guy. So I've set those boundaries that girls don't come to my house alone. Hallelujah, Hosanna. Hallelujah, Hosanna. Oh, one, I felt bad because now I look like I'm for the streets because now I wanted to go to his house and him make me dinner. But at the same time, I was like, this is what I have been praying for. A man on boundaries. I think I spoke about how tired I am to have all these boundaries up for men who claim to be like fear, fear God fearing, but they actually are very, they compromise too many things. Like they compromise too many things. So in my weakness, he was the strong one. And I kid you not, I was 1000% attracted to that because it felt like I don't have to always be on guard. There's somebody else who's trying to look out for their purity, but can also protect mine at the same time. Like, I don't, that was very attractive to me. Yo, and I just, just made me already, I had told this man so much without me realizing it, but that just like, was just like lord this is what i'm this is what i've been praying for this is what i've been praying for this is what i've been praying for um and then i said no i understand all good um that's a valid point now i'm trying to play it off um um but it is true it is true um because i never say that like i never go to guys' houses I never do that. I don't know why I said that to him. It makes me feel bad um, that I did, but it also exposed his character, which is what I... I... Okay, anyway, so he, he's like, where's your address? He says also he's not at his house. He's house sitting somebody else's house, so he's not as... He's not 10 minutes away from me. He's like 25. I'm like, oh, okay, cool. No, it's fine then. Get some rest. It's cool. And then he's like, send me your address. So I sent him my address. And then he's like, I. So he, so I sent him my address. And then he takes me, I call, I'll be there at quarter two. Girl got up, wore my green dress. I'll show you a picture. I posted it on Instagram, on my stories. Uh, I'll put it here. Insert. <laughs> um, so yeah he came through picked me up i was wearing slides and he's like are you going to be comfortable in those shoes don't you want to wear sneakers i'm like no i actually don't like shoes in general i always walk barefoot um and then you just start talking and then he's like why did you swipe and then i tell him it's that faith comment and then he's like oh i thought you saw my pictures from cape town i'm like huh he's like yeah there's and i did see a video that looked like lion's head but in my head he's an aussie guy like can't be surely and then he's like oh. i'm like when were you in cape town he's like he was just in cape town with a couple of his friends um on holiday i'm like for how long he's like three weeks i'm like oh nice so we start talking about cape town and then as we are talking um 
we he's like oh let's park by my church there's always parking there so he shows me his church that's when i realized that his church is a hotel is in a hotel and i tell him my church is in a hotel and we walked a few steps and then i showed this is my church like very close to each other in Parramatta. and then we went to get ice cream as we were talking about like cape town and stuff i'm like what we're waiting to get ice cream i'm like oh man cape town this cape town that and then um he's like yeah what we like what were you doing in around 2017 2018 i was like ah, i was an intern as a production intern at this company in greenpoint he's like oh really i've been to greenpoint so we start talking and then he's like oh yeah i was in cape town around that time as well I'm like you like visiting cape town he's like no i actually lived in cape town for two years and he was doing missionary work He was doing what he was doing missionary work he was serving for two years i did missionary work for a year so after high school i took a gap year served the lord for a year missionary work going to high schools preaching the word doing all of these stuff before i went to university so and then i asked him where because i went to 13th floor in pretoria he's like why when my mom goes to why stuff all the time why uh, youth camps they would get ywam um volunteers to come help with her ministry i'm just like how did i not meet this guy in south africa and then like so i tell him so he's blown away and then we get to the ice cream shop i order my favorite ice cream which is pistachio i'll get pistachio and something else but i'll always get pistachio or just pistachio i order pistachio this man orders pistachio look why are you ordering pistachio why are you copying me he's like that's the ice cream he, he has like that's the ice cream he has and he starts telling me places where you can buy really good pistachio ice cream <laughs> So I'm literally there like, God, what are you doing? What are you actually doing? I've prayed so hard for such a man since I got here. And now that I'm leaving, I meet him and he's not even looking at doing long distance. Like, And he has these reasons that he shared with me that are personal, that I won't share. but And they're valid. They're like proper valid reasons um, based on his experience. So I'm like, there's no way this man is going to... Like, from what he's there's like almost no there's no way this man is going to pursue me knowing i'm leaving because of what he went through and now i'm like why am i meeting him when i'm leaving bro i was here for 17 flipping months i could have met him here last year i could have met him early this year i'm just like what is going on honestly so we take a walk um we walk around we go to Parramatta river we we'll sit there and we just eat our ice cream over like an impromptu picnic and we just eat our ice cream there and we start talking as we're starting to talk about like uh family and faith walk and he's asking me questions like so how do you spend time with god <laughs> do you like read your word in the morning do you read it at night like things like that i'm like well i have a devotional right now and i start telling him how i didn't like devotionals now i this devotion is helping me and you know like he serves in kids ministry at his church <laughs> his heart oh and he has a job and he's like he's financially good um so i'm just like sitting there and we're talking and then he starts telling me his parents are pastors i'm like no way i'm like my parents are pastors and now we start talking about our pastor's kid trauma which not a lot of people can relate to and just that whole like that's when everything came out like he became so transparent and so honest and so vulnerable with me about everything and vice versa and then we walked and um there was something that did happen a, a sentence that he mentioned um because he lived in in cape town for a bit he did some missionary work in the townships so i he said something that didn't sit well with me as a person from the township and i quickly corrected him he quickly, quickly corrected him and even how he received that he is a caucasian man uh he's arab actually yeah that's caucasian right Ooh, don't don't quote me on this um uh so 
we're talking about it and i corrected him and he was like no that's actually right that was really actually ignorant of me to even say and i was like good at least you're able to hear you know um yeah so we like walked we didn't even walk back the same way we walked we took like a long long route um, past my church to get to back in the car and then we get in the car and this man is a bumping christian music like planet shakers and then he played some christian afro beat and i was like hey lord only you know at this point only you know so i got home uh and we just sat in the driveway like in my driveway and just talked and talked and i think that's when we started talking about his past relationships um and how that happened blah blah blah, blah. we started talking about that um and why he's against long distance and i said goodbye he came he hugged me gave him a christian hug on the side um and i got home and i was texted him like hey are you home yet and we spent like another like hour and a half just chatting i think what is surprising to me is how safe he makes me feel he makes me feel very safe and secure and he makes me vulnerable he he takes out things that not everybody knows about me i think there's literally one thing that's a big secret of mine that i've told my best friend um and he's the only guy who's made created such a safe environment for me to actually say that because it's something i beat myself up about all the time and it's something i'm working on and the fact that i could just tell him that like he shared himself and i could share myself easily i'm city easily i mean easily like easily easily and then he's like we'll pray about it and i'm like i'll pray about your stuff and then oh, and then I was like, I'll call. He's like, good night. I said, good night. That was Friday. He didn't talk to me the whole of Saturday, which was yesterday. Nothing. I, bro, I felt like I was in high school. I kept on like refreshing. <laughs> I kept on like refreshing. And I just didn't want to reach out because I really do want to be pursued. I don't want him. And I feel like if he is the right person for me, God will make a way and work on his heart and see if we can't do long distance. Or maybe it's just an a meeting now for something later. Uh, or maybe he's just meant to be my friend. Or maybe God is just showing me that these men exist. They are children of God that are men who live uprighteous, integral lives that are serving in the church, that have intimacy with him so to continue doing what i'm doing it is possible and my husband is out there that could just be it but i really thought that like maybe saturday he was gonna say good morning or anything but he didn't so i just left it at that because i really don't want to push my own agenda i really don't want to push anything uh so yeah that's what happened with the rib of my rib bone of my bone um when i got home i called my mom and i said i met this guy and i really like him and i haven't liked anyone like this in a very very long time he checks most of my boxes in just one conversation uh one meeting with him um and he did say it's not a date because when we were walking back to the car i asked him have you dated a black girl before and then he said no and then he said but this is not a date this is not a date because if it was a date i would have to be the one asking you out so this is really not a date i was like you i know it's not a date we've said we've spoken about this it's not a date we're friends that's what we said we're friends and then he's like i right, call cool. because if it was a date i would have to ask i would be the one asking you out i was like okay i hear you um so i called my mom told her everything that has happened i've never called my mom to tell my mom about a boy never like never and she was like put yourself out there make your intentions known to him and pray about it and if he's the person he'll also pray about it on his side and if god wants you guys together god will make it happen but don't not tell him that you like him and this is what you've been praying for um but I actually haven't done that. My mom told me that on Friday. I don't. I haven't done that. So even my pride. I just want to be pursued. Like I just want someone to put in effort into 
the bible says he who finds a good wife finds a good thing i want to be found and this man i put myself out there and i said let's grab ice cream and he did come so i feel like i think it should be on his side now if he's interested and because he's the one um reluctant on dating uh long distance i think it should be from him and not from me with that being said i didn't say anything on saturday today though while i was at church no this morning i realized hillsong is having their frontline event and i used to go to hillsong before moving to kingdom city so and frontline was one of my favorite things like the young adults and people my age 30 to well how old am i i'm turning 30 i'm not even 30 yet but it's for that age group and it's really 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 like we had a conference we had like a camp but like it's really really holy spirit filled and biblically driven and really for my faith walk was helping me a lot like a lot last year um so when i saw they haven't had an event in so long like i think the last event was in feb if not jan so they're having one again and pastor robert ferguson is speaking which is one of the um, professors and teachers at hillsong college and i always love him when he speaks a message because it's always like full of full 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 of the word the word the word the word it's not up and up high up. so seeing that one frontline hasn't had an event in a very long time and they're having it with one of my favorite um i hate saying favorite but like because we like ranking pastors now but one of really god i think camilla right now pastors that i trust biblically uh and that's a big thing for me having been out of account to trust somebody's doctrine is it's not me just saying oh i like this pastor no it's the only reason i like him is because it's biblically driven and correctly so um so he's speaking um and it's happening in the city uh close to where masego's festival is um concert is happening so it just seemed to make sense when i woke up this morning so i'm like okay lord let me do it let me go there's something there and they're talking about wholeness they're talking about relationships they're talking about um healthy living as a christian so i'm very excited for that it's happening at six o'clock and the concert starts at seven but masego is only starting to perform at nine so i will have enough time even if the 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 service thing runs up until 7 30 i can leave at 7 30 and still make it on time so i actually put like while i was at church i felt like god was saying invite him anyway um and i didn't want to i really didn't want to because i wanted him to come to me um but i felt like god was saying let me just invite him even if he doesn't come but just invite him I'm like okay so while we were shopping today i sent him the poster and i told him this is what i'm doing tonight if you're available it would be great because i really like this um um uh, type of events and stuff like that so he hasn't responded he could respond any minute now while i'm recording this long ass video um but yeah that's what's going on i also need to actually send um emails uh with the tracking numbers i actually forgot that i needed to do that today um so i need to just grab my laptop and do that take a nap really quickly so that around 4 30 or 5 i can start making my way into the cbd what a mouthful guys a wig changed oh. um i'm not even putting on foundation or anything this is my i just woke up voice um a little bit overslept but it's okay i have my things all ready to go oh I spoke to my guy and he said he has some school, some um, assignments to do. He is doing a, a counseling course 
you know how pastors are like in your singleness read a book to start a course travel he does a lot of those things um which i like uh, but he can't come with me which is sad but that's okay he's like he would love to go but he has the same assignment to do today so can't make it it is okay um, here's my phone wow i'm recording with it okay it is just after five o'clock and the thing starts at six and using public transport i might get there at like 6 20 so an hour over an hour everything my pimples are out everything is just doing too much i think i should uh, put on makeup because i'm going to an event i mean okay let's just do foundation um yeah so he can't come with me. Oof. I love that he loved he knew who Rob Ferguson was because he says he loves Rob Ferguson as well. Um, so he said something just now before I slept that like um, when he dropped me off, I looked a little bit sad. Um, so when he dropped me off, I was searching for my keys, so I couldn't find my house keys so that's what was happening but maybe i did look sad i don't know you had just told me um the reasons a lot of reasons why he uh won't do long distance although valid and definitely his choice um of course i was a little bit down about that because yeah obviously you guys know i like him and he knows i like him so he asked me that and I said, yeah, maybe I was a little bit down um, because, you know, and like, you know, our age, it's not as easy to find somebody who loves the Lord, loves the church, and um, you have a lot in common with. Yeah, one. So he just responded. I'm seeing it now as I wake up that he responded. And his response is a little bit confusing to me. Um, I don't even know how to explain his response. But nothing offensive or anything like that. It just doesn't seem like we're having the same conversation. Or maybe I expected him to say, no, I hear what you're saying, but, or something else. And the other truth is, I might have liked him that much he might not have liked me at all there's that possibility as well so maybe he's trying to let me down nicely um yeah so that's that i'm not sad about it i'm just like okay cool lord like i said maybe you just wanted me to meet him to know that there are men in the kingdom that you we must continue doing what we're doing you know yeah i feel much better now makeup on like like i'm going to an event of young people yeah so i need to just put on shoes and where's my jacket i have a jacket and i need to call my friend angie who's going to the Mase masego event with me to check on how she is doing her way about but yeah that is the update i don't know when is the next bus but it's half past five and the thing he starts at six i'm praying that um there's gonna be like some welcome time and people to to chat before the actual session starts because 
I really don't want to miss anything from the station itself. Um, so I'm a bit late. Uh, it leaves in three minutes. Platform one, three minutes. Okay. Oh, I didn't take the left. Do I need the left? No. But I'm gonna take the left. Seems empty as well. is 622 uh, um, I can see church um, I'm hoping there was like welcoming and you know like get to know someone for 20 minutes because um, I really don't like the thought that I have missed out but there's a lot of people going in I'm excited yeah I'm excited. Oh, I haven't been here in so long. Oh, it seems like a normal church service. So there's praise and worship and everything. Pleases God, our Savior, who wants all people to be saved and to come to acknowledge, to, to and to come to a knowledge of the truth. For this is one God and one being. Actually, hearing, we actually uh, shot a video around our tithes and offerings. And believe it or not, Robert Ferguson is speaking tonight, but he also is going to speak. He's speaking to us around our offering. Uh, which is amazing. So as you go ahead and prepare, there's many different ways to give, but we're going to go ahead and take a look at the screen to hear what Robert has to say about our tithes and offerings. Amanda and I were married in... <laughs> Church was great. Church was great. We got a few things done. I didn't write as much as I thought I would. Um, but you know, sometimes you hear the word of God and you write a few things down and then you go back there and that's exactly what you need. You just needed that one line you wrote three years ago. <laughs> that's still on your notes. So a really, really good session, a really powerful session. I just felt like I've heard majority of the stuff and what I didn't hear is what I wrote down. And it's good to keep in remembrance um to remember certain things um relationships specifically about friendships 
so there was a couple of powerful stuff but my notes are on my phone so i can't even open them and share with you but now we are going to a uh, mall park for masego in sydney i'm excited but for those who don't know he's like a jazz musician from the states but he's done some stuff with drake as well probably the drake song you think is a drake song is a masego song <laughs> yeah. yeah. Thank the Lord that the bus is two minutes delayed. I rushed to get here. Mind you on time, but the two minutes gives me time to breathe. Okay guys, I think I'm here. I think this is the right place. I think it is full. <laughs> I haven't seen, this sounds bad, but I haven't seen any black person. Oh no, are those? Nope, haven't. So now we go to my poor Lisa. Anyway, this is where we are. Royal Hall of... Are you happy? 
this is the end. Right, this is the end of the video. I am pretty sure it is one long ass video. So if you did get here, please hashtag. There you go. Last Sydney Adventures. Hashtag Last Sydney Adventures. I am going home. It is very late. I had an amazing time. Oh, okay. I don't know what time I'll get home, but it's just after 11, 10 past 11 now. Uh, getting home normally is like 35 minutes. Um, but yeah, it's late, so I don't know the delays. But I love you. I appreciate you. Bye.